the biggest asset in America today is student loan debt. In other words, America is getting rich, and thanks to Barack Obama from Hawaii, Barack Obama basically let student loan debt loose, and now is our biggest asset of America. In other words, America is trying to stay, to survive on the backs of our college kids. If that's not criminal, I don't know what is. It just feels unconscionable to me. That's what I'm saying. And Biden for giving 39 billion of the debt. Yeah, but that, that's a drop in the bucket. You know what I mean? It's, it's. I think our our student loan debt is 1.6 trillion. Do you think education should be free in the United States? No, I mean, um, on the other side of it, you got what you pay for. Is what I'm saying. And I'm coming up with a new book. It'd be out. You know, it takes a little while. But the reason that capitalists lose and Marxists win, okay, and most academics are Marxists. Uh, in 1965, I read this book here, The Communist Manifesto. And I left little sleepy Hawaii, and I went to school in New York City, and I woke up, you know. <laughs> Everything's not hula lands and flower lays and pineapple. But um, when I was in school in New York, my economics teacher had me read this book here. And just recently, 39 professors at Arizona State University, I mean, just a few months ago, attacked me yeah. because I was on stage with Dennis Prager, uh, my doctor, Dr. Rado Gopalan, who's both a doctor of acupuncture and a cardiac surgeon. Dennis Prager spoke on happiness, and I spoke on wealth. And the 39 professors came after us. So they protested. They threatened students that they would lose their grades if they came to see us. What is, our, our title was Health, Wealth, and Happiness. So Daniela, you know how I am with my mouth. I, w I went on, I put my Marine Corps, you know, my, I wear my Marine Corps jacket. I stood on stage with this and I said, all you school teachers out there, you should read this book to find out who you are. Well, that just infuriated them. So they came after us even worse. <laughs> you know, while you were saying that story about, you know, when you moved to New York City, I was thinking, what would you, if I could bring you back to that Robert in New York City, what would you tell him? Well, I, I don't, I don't know if we can tell anybody anything these days, Daniela. You know, I mean, it's, it's really. I just, I still keep saying to people, put yourself on your own gold standard or silver. I have a lot of silver, you know, eagles and coins, because I want to be off the grid. I want to be off the Treasury and Fed and Wall Street. I want nothing to do with those criminals. Do you know what I mean? As, as Warren Buffett's, you know, somebody just asked, well, Charles Payne asked me on Fox. He says, what about Wall Street saying, oh, no, no, no. I said, well, Warren Buffett said it best, never ask an insurance salesman if you should buy more insurance. And so because the Wall Street Journal is saying everything is good in S&P land. I'm going, how would you believe those guys? You want so that's to, my concern. Yeah, you want to be unbankable. Yeah, I want to be able that I can spend my money freely. So, yeah. So you know, I, I I store my money in different places throughout the world because if I have to flee, I'm going to flee. Well, because how terrifying is it for you the thought of a central bank digital currency and 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 governments pushing us towards cashless systems? Is that Marxism or what? You know, it's it's Marxism at its finest. I recommend people read this book because it was written in 1848. It's only about 50 pages, but it's influenced more people throughout the world. It's also been the reason over 100 million deaths. More people die at the hands of communists than capitalists. If you understand that one, and you know, like I, I flew this in Vietnam here, it's a helicopter gunship, and that's a story I told you before. I flew behind enemy lines just to go buy some gold because that was in 72 and Nixon had taken the dollar off the gold standard and gold was 35 bucks an ounce and it was now pushing 50 bucks an ounce. And so I didn't know what gold was. The you know, Americans don't know because 1933, I think Roosevelt made it illegal. So I flew behind enemy lines. I walk up to this little Vietnamese woman you know, the, the Vietnamese saying these two Americans are going to die today because there's Viet Cong everywhere. And I walk up to the little Vietnamese woman with red teeth, you know, 
and I, I parked this not too far from her little shack. And I said, I want to buy gold for 35 bucks. And she, she broke out this big red smile and said, spot. I went, what? Spot. I went, I have a spot on my shirt or something? And, and Daniela, that woman changed my life. I love that story. I, isn't that a good story? Yeah, because I, I realized- I would have more, paid to be a fly on the wall with that moment, you arriving in this chopper. Yeah. <laughs> So here's my, co here's my co pilot and I nudging each other. We're two college graduates and we had no idea what she was talking about. I was trying to get gold down from 50 to maybe 42. And she goes, Spot. I, didn't, I had no idea what she was talking about. Some people say, Who is your best teacher in the world? I'll say a little Vietnamese woman with red teeth, you know, kicking my butt. You. God bless her. This, this is that. money. This is money. This is toilet paper. <laughs> there you go, folks. Robert, it is our summer series. So I'm going to leave you the last word because, you know, I like the summer series because I feel it resets people for September. We kind of let our guard down in the, in, in the summer, you know, but we have to be prepared, as you say, you know, whether it's creating your own gold, your own gold standard, whatever. So final word to you as, yeah, enjoy the rest of your summer, but let's not fall asleep at the wheel here, folks, right? Right, exactly. If I could plug my new, I don't know, I don't know when it's coming out. I'm still working on it. It's called Teaching Capitalism. You know, we're all educated by Marxists. Remember, I went, I'm an academy graduate, you know. I only was educated by uh, military people, but I see the world differently. And the reason I have my board game back here, Cash Flow, is this is your biggest asset. The left, you know, the left ear and your right ear contains your brain. And the question is, Who's putting information into your greatest asset? Is it a capitalist or a Marxist? And since most t teachers, like my poor dad, are Marxists, they believe in labor unions and you know taxes and all those other things. I don't. So the thing here is this, as we approach the new year, ask yourself, what are we teaching our kids? That is the most important thing. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative. The question is, what are we teaching our kids? And that's why Merritt Garland, the head of the DOJ, Department of Justice, called teachers, I mean, called parents terrorists, because they're wondering, why are we studying critical race theory? Why are we studying gender transitions? You know, why are we studying that stuff when we should be teaching kids about money and capitalism in a free world? So what are we teaching our kids is the thing I'll leave people with as we enjoy our summer vacations. On a nice light note, Robert Kiyosaki, I always love speaking with you. I'm going to come see you in Phoenix soon, okay? Yeah, when it's cooler. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to wait. I think I'll wait for that. Yeah. Thank you, Robert Kiyosaki. And thank you Thank all. you, Daniela. <laughs>